Quilts, and I'm here to do the first arrow or our first month for the Paradox Point so along and I will be uploading videos on this block of the month every third Sunday of the month so this is block one and we're actually making this arrow which is made from four of these 60 degree triangles So the first thing you need to do is, from your paper pattern, you have a foundation pattern. And what I do is I go ahead, you need to make four copies from the book. So I've made four copies of each pattern. And if you don't want to do it all at one time, you can just do it per month. And then I stacked all of my papers together and just rough cut them out with a pair of scissors. That way I'm not holding the whole piece of typing paper in my hand. And you can use however you want to do. You can use foundation papers if you like. I'm just using what I have and I'm not spending any additional funds. Then the other things that I'm using is the add a quarter ruler. And they do recommend that in the book. And on my little add a quarter ruler, I put a little piece of fabric on it just so that it doesn't get lost because it's so tiny. And then I use some form of card, either something that's in a mailer, a postcard, or a greeting card. I like to use it to fold with. And then I also am using two flathead pins. And I recommend flathead pins instead of pins with balls on them. And you'll see why in a minute and then I have my fabrics cut for triangle number one and I forgot to mention of course you need a rotary cutter okay so the first thing that I like to do is I like to fold my paper on the actual fold lines because it gives the paper a memory so when I actually put my fabric on it that it will remember where I fold before so it's a lot easier to do while the paper is still flat this is not a step that you have to do it's just something that I like to do So now my paper is a little curl curly <laughs> and you can see what the difference is compared to the original template So the next step is I've got number one and it needs to have color a and color a is my orange and a lot of people when they paper piece think that you're supposed to put it on this side you actually are putting it onto the back side and then you kind of hold it up to your light to see to make sure you've got at least a quarter of an inch all the way around so let me do that okay so I have my foundation held in place where it's at least a quarter of an inch all the way around and this is where the flathead pins come in because they're not ballpoint you don't have to worry about anything poking up preventing your ruler from working so then you just take this put your pin in and then I because this one is so long when I normally do paper piecing I normally only need one but since this is a long piece and one pin won't hold it in place I use two so now I just want to hold it up to the light again to check and make sure nothing has shifted. And everything is good. So I actually have a quarter of an inch all the way around. Now the next step is you're going to be working from your line side and it's telling me to go to line number two. Line number two is an accent piece. So I want to put my card 
on the line between one and two and I want to fold back on those lines that I used as memory lines it's a lot easier because I already folded them so it already knows where it needs to go so then once I have that in I can place my add a quarter ruler on top of that and the add a quarter ruler is nice better than a regular ruler because I would have to put if this if I use a regular ruler I have to put my quarter inch line on the edge and then trim but with the add a quarter ruler my cards pushed up this add a quarter ruler has a lip on the back and that lip actually catches where you have folded and so then you just go ahead and trim off your excess fabric. So now I already have my quarter of an inch built into my seam. So now I can open my paper back out. And when I turn to the back, I now want to add my next piece. I'm going to move my pen over just a little so I don't sew in it. And now I want to add my pieces right sides together onto that edge that I just trimmed between the one and two line. Now I am going to take this, flip it over, and I'm using an open toe foot so that I can see. And then I want to sew starting one quarter of an inch away from above the line. And then I want to stitch down. cut my thread now my pins are underneath so I want to remove my pins remove my pins and now I can just finger press this seam open and now I want to do the exact same thing to this side and at this point, I no longer need my pins. I just set them aside so when I come to the next new block where I'm putting on just one piece of fabric, I can trim it off. So now I want to put my card on the line between one and three because I'm adding my third piece now. And each of these triangles are different so your piecing order will be different but for these four that I'm working on today they're all exactly the same so now I want to just come back and trim this with my add a quarter rule I've already showed you that step and then once I do that I now have a straight line here that I'm able to add my accent strip and the instructions tells you how many accent strips and how many pieces of each particular color of fabric you need. And while I'm sewing this, I'll just go ahead and tell you that I've reduced my stitch length to 1.5 or 1.6 millimeters so that I'm using a smaller stitch length. So when I go to pull my paper off, it will come off a little easier because it's been perforated a little more. Now from here, I've got to fold on the line because I want to add a piece of fabric over here and over here. This is my number four and this is my number five. So what I like to do is now I'm putting my card on the line between two and four. I pull that back and then I'll go ahead and use my add a quarter ruler to square that side up. And you're not trimming much here because they made your accent fabric just a little bit bigger than what's required. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to go ahead and square up this other side as well next to five. And I'm doing that because it just is a duplicate step. Since it's not crossing any of the seams, I can go ahead and add that next squaring up and then I can add my next two pieces without having to square up.
So now that I have that, I'm looking through my paper to make sure that I'm above this line here. And then I am stitching one quarter of an inch and I will do that on both sides. And if you don't want to press your seam open with your nail there are numerous tools there's the wooden iron and I also have a clover pressing bar that I will probably use at some point as well but I just wanted to get this video up for you today So now I have five pieces on. When I turn it back around, it's going to tell me that I need my accents on each side, but I need to square up on this line and over here. So I'm going to do that off the camera and then I'm going to continue sewing all the way out. And I like the pattern because it does tell you which fabric goes in which spot so you're never confused as to which fabric you're supposed to be using. Now I need to add my color number two. Line up the edges here, flip it, turn it. You do need to be careful that when you flip it under that you're not tucking your fabric underneath because sometimes your fabric can tuck underneath. And as a beginner, that will happen. Press this out and I will do the other side. So now we got a unit that looks like this and all we need to do is add our piece at the top. And you can see right here we have a line that's right here across the top. So again, we just take our cord, we take our card, and we fold it back, and we just gently lift up on all those seams, and it will pop right off the paper. Got to be gentle so that you're getting all of your threads. So I have that popped up from the paper, and now I take it and add my add a quarter ruler onto it and do my trimming and this is the time that one a longer add a quarter ruler would be great but you can just slide your add a quarter ruler down the seam because you have to trim from one end to the next so it's not critical and now I have another piece of color too that I need to put on top here and I need to make sure that it's centered between my seam lines to make sure that I'm going to have enough fabric on both sides. So this is how it gets stitched. I flip it over, make sure I don't turn any of my seams under. And again, I'm going to stitch just right outside of my, the edge of my pattern guidelines, making sure I've got at least a quarter of an inch and a little more won't hurt. And then when that's done, I have a block unit that looks like this. Now I will take this to my iron and press it flat with the dry iron. So I'm going to go ahead and do this to all four of my units and then I will come back and show you how to square this up. I took my units to the ironing station 
and I pressed everything flat so nothing is raised up. And I made sure that I used a dry iron. Please do not use steam because steam will wet your paper if you're using paper and cause it to crinkle and draw up. So I just wanted to show you the front side of my one of my units. And now I am actually going to trim around the outside. How I like to trim my pieces up is this is my inside line, my finished size. I notice that sometimes when you copy the seam allowance gets a little bigger so I like to put my quarter inch line on my ruler on the finish line on the finish sizing line sometimes it ends up where the quarter inch seam is and sometimes it doesn't and then I just rotate my mat and trim off around the entire triangle and I'm also trimming they've got little markings to make it so that it's got flat corners instead of pointy corners so I'm also trimming that off as well And my last little corner here. So now I have the unit completely trimmed all the way around. And when I turn it back over, I have something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and square up all four of my triangle units and I'll meet you on my design wall. I'm back with my squared units. And I have placed them on my design wall in the orientation that they will be sewn. At this point, I still have the paper on the back of the blocks. You do not want to take your paper off until you have sewn around all of the sides. So that you do not have to worry about your fabric stretching because you have a lot of bias edges now. So I am going to go ahead and sew this unit together and then I'll come back with this finished triangle segment. I thought that I would come back and just show you where I am. I have actually sewed my three triangles on the bottom and I just wanted to show you that I am actually pressing my seams open. I've now flipped the design on the wrong side just so you can see that I'm pressing my seams open and after I sew two connecting seams together I go ahead and remove that paper that's only in the seam allowance so I just wanted to show you that step so now I'm going to go put the triangle on top and then I will just be removing the seam, the paper that's along this seam allowance I'm back with my four triangles sewn together and I forgot to match up these points here so when you're sewing your block make sure that you match up these points I'm not sure if I'm going to take it out I probably just keep going but I wanted to make you aware that I totally forgot about matching up these lines I just started sewing and next you want to add units to the sides of this block whatever your background fabric is going to be so I decided to use this dark blue. This blue is a linen print as well as this gray is a linen print. And now that I'm looking at this, I should have reversed my colors and put my lighter color on the outside of the block and have my darker color inside. So I'll know that in the future as well. But uh, you saw this onto the side. You should have this a quarter inch tip sticking out at the top. So I'm thinking because this point is already gone when you slide it into the corner that you should have a quarter inch tip hanging off and then it should line up at the bottom. So yeah, so I'll put that on each side and then we'll have a 
a more rectangular unit when I'm done. I'm back and I have my rectangle sewn now. And now I need to work on the part that will make this an arrow, which is this part here. And so I will have to paper piece this unit. And I didn't say this at the beginning because I wanted to wait until we got to this point. But this section is exactly the same for all of your blocks. So you'll be cutting the exact same thing for this block. You'll be determining which fabric gets cut into the most. And they tell you that in your directions on cutting for the arrow bases here. So I am going to go make a unit for this. Go make a copy of a unit for this. And while I'm doing it, I know I'm going to need 12 of these units. So I'm just going to make 12 copies of that unit. So I have my paper that I've already pre-folded on the lines. And now it's time for me to sew my base. So I've got my color A and B. So color B is my actual, is my purple color. So I need to start with color B. And again, I'm just going to cover my fold lines and then I am going to put a couple of pins in to hold the paper in place so that it doesn't move. Okay. So I am now going to pin so that I can keep this fabric over this base. And you can pin on any side that you like. I am going to pin on the paper side so that I can see my points. And I think that's a good idea to pin on the paper side before I pinned on the fabric side. And then I had to readjust my pin. So now I just take my card and I've already got the memory of my lines folded in. And so I can just fold that over and then trim that with my add a quarter ruler. And now I want to use color A in my number two position here. And you can see right here where this is not wanting to come back on the cord. That's when I pull all of the fabrics, including the fabrics in the seam allowance, and just lightly lift them up. And then it lays back down flat. And then I take it and trim it off. Now I'm ready to do a B on this side, but I also want to trim on the other side as well. So I can do both trims at the same time. And then here again, I've got the little piece I've got to peel off. that seam open. <laughs> Press that seam open. And now I just have my remaining piece to sew on this side of the rectangle. 
This kind of reminds me of the New York Beauty pieces, but they're not on an arc. Which reminds me also that I need to finish my New York Beauty. Okay. So now we have all of these same sewn. Everything is covered. And now I just need to go press this unit. And I'll be right back. I'm back with my paper piece rectangles with the points. And now... I have to fill this out so that I can make my arrow here. So what I'm going to do, they've given you all of the cutting instructions for these pieces in the book and I'm not going to discuss those. For these, they actually gave you templates to cut that was in the book and now we're just going to place a spacer line between with your background between this unit and you're going to add background strips between each one of these segments that they have given you to cut in the pattern. Have that one in the wrong spot. And then what happens is this unit gets smaller as you go down. All of these get pieced with just regular quarter inch seaming and then once they're all together this unit will fit on each side so with the seam allowance is gone that this should equal the size of this that they've told you to cut so I'm going to go sew all of this together add this sides on and then I will come back with the next step so we're back and I have sewn this unit. I have not connected anything yet, but I just wanted to show you my progress. At this point, this particular unit here has something sewn on all four sides. So at that point, I was able to go ahead and remove my paper from this portion of the block. Now I could wait until I connect it up to the top and remove all of my paper at the same time, that would be okay too. I would not recommend removing the paper up at the top until you have sewn your arrow to it. So that's my next step. And then I'm going to remove the paper and then I will just show you a photo of the finished block at the end. At this time, I'll go ahead and say thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.